Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. This is KC4124, Introduction to MEMS Technology. My name is Dr. Iskandar Yahya and this is Lecture 6.2, Surface Micromachining. The lecture outline for Lecture 6.2 is as follows. First, we will look at what are the differences between bulk micromachining and surface micromachining. Secondly, we will look at some example and definition of structural and sacrificial layers. And then, we will look at what are the basic process steps in surface micromachining. In here, we will look at an example of how we can process to build a hinge. Number four, we will look at some examples of deposition techniques in depositing structural and sacrificial layers. Next, we will look at stiction problems. We will define what are stiction problems and we will look at some examples. And then we will move on to look at what are the possible solutions that we can apply in order to solve stiction problems. And then we will end the lecture with some examples of complex 3D microstructures. Bulk versus surface micromachine. What is the difference between bulk and surface micromachining? For bulk micromachining, it involves removing or etching parts of a bulk material and shaping it to the desired device design structure. We can also in, it can also involve deposition of additional structural layers. On the other hand, for surface micromachining, it involves depositing device structural layers on a support substrate and shaping them to the, de to the desired design structure. Okay. Here, for surface micromachining, the substrate is not modified, only as a foundation platform from the, for the surface micromachining. Okay. We add new layers on top of, this, of the substrate and we shape the new layers. However, both involve deposition of sacrificial layers. What are structural layers and what are sacrificial layers? For structural layers, okay, it forms the whole or part of the device structures on a substrate. If we look at the pictures below here, okay, we can see there are several structures on top of the substrate. All right. So the structures on top of the substrate is what we call the structural layer. These are the layers which will remain as part of the device. Okay. It can be a non-moving or a moving part and it can be a rigid or flexible material depending on our application. For sacrificial layer, it forms temporary layers to aid that is to cover or support the patterning and machining of the structural layer. For example, if we want to pattern or etch away some of the structural layer, we first have to deposit the sacrificial layer as part of the cover or the mask for our patterning process. Okay? Most of the sacrificial layer is non-moving. It is just a passivation layer which covers any part that we, we, we try to shape or etch away. All right? One of the criteria for a sacrificial layer is that it must be able to be removed at the end of the fabrication. Meaning, at the end of the fabrication, the end product or the end device does not contain any sacrificial layer. All the sacrificial layer must have been removed prior to that. All right. This is an example. The figure shows an example of a step-by-step -step how the sacrificial layer is deposited in order to aid the patterning of the structural layer. Some examples of structural and sacrificial layers. For structural layers, uh, the most common one is silicon, and it also covers amorphous silicon, polysilicon, silicon dioxide, and also quartz. Metals can also form as the structural layer materials, such as titanium, copper, gold, aluminium, chromium, and also alloys. We can also use compound semiconductor or compound materials such as silicon nit tetranitrate and silicon carbide. Some examples of sacrificial layers include uh, silicon dioxide. Okay? We can also use polymers such as photoresist, polymide and other organic materials. And sometimes we can use metal which is removed afterwards which is for example copper. Let's look now at the surface micromachining process steps. 
This is the basic steps involved in sacrificial layer processing. Sacrificial layer processing is the basic processing involved in surface micromachining. Any device that you want to make or any structure that you want to make, it must involve part of this basic um, processing technique. Okay, let's look at this technique step by step. So step number one, we first deposit the sacrificial layer, which is the white layer here. And then step number two, we pattern the sacrificial layer in order to expose any pattern that we want to deposit the new structural layer on. Alright, so step number three, we deposit the structural layer. In this case, we use conformal deposition. Conformal deposition means the layer of the structural layer will conform to the shape of the surface. So if the surface has some exposed region like here, okay, the layer of the uh, the structural layer will cover that uh, that surface topology as well. So it will it will cover everything conforms to the surface condition of your substrate. After that, step number four is the liquid phase removal of the sacrificial layer. Here we can imagine that we are etch we are etching away the um, the sacrificial layer. So this can be done by either using etchant or using solvent if we are using an organic uh, sacrificial layer. After that, step number five is the removal of liquid and drying. Okay, so these five steps is the basic step on which we can build our whole process on. So for any, sub any kind of structure, we can use the same five-step process. So this is another example of different structures that you can build by using this process. If the structure that we are trying to build is very complex or it includes several parts with moving parts, then our processing uh, steps will involve the repetition of some of the basic process uh, technique here. So for example, if we look at a structure which has holes like this or a moving cantilever beams, or something that looks like this, okay, or a hinge, for example, we can use the same uh, process steps, but we repeat a few steps. So in, in this hinge fabrication example, the process step is, there's seven process steps, but all these seven process steps is based on the five process, basic process step. So let's look at it in, in detail. So step number one, deposition of sacrificial layer. So that is similar to this one. All right, step number one. And then step number two, deposition of structural layer. Again, this is the same as the basic, the basic step. Number three, deposition of second sacrificial layer. So in order to build something of a complex nature like this, okay, we sometimes have to repeat some of the process steps from these five process steps. So in this case, we are repeating the second sacrificial layer deposition. After that, we etch anchor to the substrate. Okay, so etching anchor to the substrate is similar to the um, liquid phase removal of sacrificial layer or also the structural layer. Okay, so it is step number four. And then the deposition of second structural layer. So here we are repeating step number, step number, uh, step number three. Okay, and then patterning of second structural layer. Step number seven: etch away all sacrificial layer to release the first structural layer. So all you have to remember is these basic five steps. All right. So step number four: it can include the liquid phase removal of sacrificial layer and also the structural layer. So the patterning of structural layer as well. So this is a similar step for both of it. So for any complex structure that you want to build, you, you must be able to produce the process step which is based on the basic five-step sacrificial layer processing. In the exam, for example, a question might ask you, a question might give you an example figure of a structure that you have to build or fabricate. So what you may be asked to do is to come up with the step-by-step -step process in order to fabricate that based on surface micro-machining. 
So if you want to answer that kind of question, all you need to do is to know how to repeat one of the five steps. Now let's look at the deposition techniques available for us to deposit structural or sacrificial layers. Now regardless whether we are depositing structural or sacrificial layers, the type of the layer will determine what, what deposition techniques that we have to use. For example, for metal-based material or layers, we can use either evaporation, sputtering, or electroplating. For plastic material or non-metals, we can use CVD. For silicon-based uh, structural layers, we can use molecular beam epitaxy. All right. For silicon dioxide in sacrificial layer, we can use either sputtering or thermal oxidation. If we have to deposit polymers or organic material in liquid form, for example, photoresist or polymide, and other organic materials, we can apply spin coating. Spin coating, as you can recall, is basically just dropping it on the wafer and then spinning the wafer to form a uniform uh, layer on top of the wafer. Copper can be electroplated or evaporated and is relatively inexpensive. So that is why copper is sometimes used a lot in for sacrificial layer because it doesn't cost that much. Right? And it can be deposited also by um, the, the oxide of copper can also be deposited by plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition, PECVD. All right. So the deposition techniques that you need to know in uh, briefly or remember the process is chemical vapor deposition, which is CVD, electroplating, thermal oxidation, and also physical vapor deposition, which involve both the evaporation and sputtering. Now, you do not need to know in detail the process steps, but you have to have the rough idea of what does each of these process involve. For example, uh, if you are looking at evaporation, what does it involve? It involves the evaporation of metal source, and then the vapor of the metal will be deposited on top of your wafer. All right. So you need to know briefly what does the process involve. You do not need to know in detail. And since you have already learned that in the previous uh, course, I will not go through it in detail. So you can just read through it. Okay, you can read through it and try to remember uh, what does the basic process involve. For CVD, I would like to add here that there are three types of CVD. One is APCVD, LPCVD, and PECVD. APCVD stands for Atmospheric Pressure CVD, LPCVD stands for Low Pressure CVD, and PECVD stands for Plasma Enhanced CVD. So you can read through the lecture notes and get the general idea what are the differences and what are the disadvantages and advantages of the respective techniques. All right? But generally, CVD is good because it has high step coverage a high step coverage and can deposit different types of films using the same machine. It is also used a lot in a production line because it can be used to produce uh, it can be used to produce a high number of wafer per process. So you are able to do a high yield of devices. Also electroplating, evaporation, sputtering, gas phase silicon etching and the other so you just have to read through and try to understand uh, this is the organic sacrificial layer all right we have photoresist polyamide and the, the advantage and disadvantages so you do not need to memorize this as long as you can understand and know what are the differences Okay. One important thing that you need to understand here is the criteria for selecting materials and etching solutions. So what are the criteria that you use in order to select which deposition techniques that you want to use and which etching solution process that you want to use? All right. So the selectivity and the criteria is as follows. First, the selectivity. All right. We need to know the etch rate on structural layer and also etch rate on sacrificial layer. So it, the etch rate must be quite high in order to speed up the process. All right. This, uh, another criteria is the etch rate. 
Okay, rapid etching rate on sacrificial layer to reduce etching time. But sometimes the etch rate have to be low for structural layer in order to produce a very good, very good and sharp structure. Okay. You should also know the deposition temperature. So, you need to know what is the deposition temperature. Alright, in choosing the deposition temperature, you need to take into consideration what are the materials on your substrate. What are your sacrificial layers? What are the materials for your structural layers? Because not because each type of layer or material has a certain limit on terms of in terms of the melting temperature so you need to take that into consideration all right you also need to take into consideration the intrinsic stress of the structural layer you need to know how the arrangement of the atoms inside the structural layer can can introduce the stress which is intrinsic okay and then the surface smoothness and also long-term stability. Stiction problem. What is stiction? Stiction is sticking and friction. And it happens when some, or some of the moving parts or structure on your device is sticking together and causing friction to one another. Looking at the diagram below, you can see that this is a parallel cantilever beam. It should the cantilever beam should be suspended on top of your sub, uh, substrate structure, all right? Like this. The way you can tell that it is suspended by looking at the shadow. So there is a shadow underneath the cantilever beam, indicating that it is suspended. But for other cantilever beam which are longer, all right, you cannot really see the the shadow. That means at that end part of the cantilever beam it is now sticking to the substrate and this is something that you want to avoid in order to make sure that your device is operating correctly now this problem is this problem is due to the fabrication process all right now what is the origin of stiction during the process as the liquid solution gradually vaporizes the trapped liquid exerts surface tension force on the microstructure, pulling the device down. Okay, surfaces can be formed permanent. Surfaces can form permanent bond by molecular forces when they are closed. For example, when you are etching away the sacrificial layer, you put it inside a solution etchant. When you take it out, and for the drying process, some of the etchant liquid is trapped inside. For example, here underneath the cantilever beam. This trapped etchant will dry out. At the same time, the surface tension will force, the surface tension will, will pull these two parts together and make them stick. And sometimes this sticking can be permanent. How do we, uh, how do we go about uh, solving this problem? Okay, there are several methods, there are several sol solutions that we can choose from. One of it is as follows. The method number one, is by use is by using magnetic actuation to pull structures away from the surface this can be used to reduce surface tension length of arm all right the limitation is it only works for structures with magnetic material for example if the cantilever beam is magnetically sensitive we can use magnetic actuation to pull it up to make sure that it does not stick to the substrate but the limitation is that for other types of material, we cannot use this method. Antistiction method number two is by using organic pillar to support the structure during the liquid removal process. Looking at the figure here, if for example we have a hollowed structure like this, we have a structure with hollow body, what we can do when we want to remove this sacrificial layer in the hollow, we can plug in some pillars. The pillars here is to support the suspended dome right during the drying process. Otherwise, the dome will be bent and sticking to the substrate like this. By having this organic pillar, it will support the dome during the process, during the drying process. The organic pillar can be removed afterwards by oxygen plasma etching, which which is a dry etching process, so there is no more problem with stiction. Anti-stiction method number three is by supercritical uh, carbon dioxide drying. 
This is what also we call the phase change release method. We can avoid surface tension by relaying on phase change with less surface tension than water vapor. Here we use uh, carbon di dioxide to dry our, our device. At this supercritical state, the temperature is above 31 degrees Celsius and the pressure is above 72.8 atmospheric. This is the parameter needed for this process. Okay, the step-by-step -step process involves first of all the change water with methanol. So we substitute water with methanol and then change methanol with liquid carbon dioxide from, from room temperature and at 1200 PSI. And then step number three, we heat the content to 35 degrees Celsius and the carbon dioxide is vented. Freestanding cantilever beams up to 850 micrometer can still release without any station by using this process. Let's look at uh, the supercritical carbon dioxide drying in, in detail. When a substance in the liquid phase at a pressure greater than the critical pressure is heated, it undergoes a transition from a liquid to a supercritical fluid at the critical temperature. This transition does not involve interfaces. All right, so there is no problem with surface tension or anything like that. The criteria is uh, chemically inert and it is non-toxic and it has low critical temperature at around 35 degrees Celsius. For carbon dioxide, the critical, the critical temperature is around 31 degrees Celsius and the critical pressure is 72.8 atmospheric pressure. So this is the supercritical re regime. So we are drying the substrate by using carbon dioxide at this supercritical phase state. Right, where it does not involve any stiction or any uh, surface tension. The anti-stiction method number four is by using SAM or also called self-assembled monolayer. By using SAM, we can form low stiction chemically stable surface coating using self-assembled monolayer. So, in order to avoid two surfaces sticking together, we can first cover the surface with self-assembled monolayer which will prevent um, adhesion force between the two surfaces. SAM file is comprised of a close packed array of alkyl, alkyl chains which spontaneous, spontaneously form an oxidized silicon surface and can remain stable after 18 months in air. Okay, so an example of an SAM is an octadecyl trichlorosilane trichlorosilane. So the, the structure of the monolayer involves an hydroxyl group which is sticking out and this hydroxyl group will prevent two surfaces from sticking to one another. So you can imagine this to be like as if it is a non-stick non -stick uh, surface. All right. Um, these are some examples of complex 3D microstructures which can be fabricated by using surface micromachining technique. So have a look and I hope you can appreciate how difficult it is and how critical the process is in, in pr producing such small structures. With that, I end the lecture by looking at the summary. So for the lecture 6.2 summary, first we have looked at the bulk versus surface micromachining. What are the differences? We have looked at ex example and definition of structural and sacrificial layers. And also what are the criteria that we need to look at in order to select which material that we, sh we should use for our device. We have looked at the basic 5-step surface micromachining process step, which is also called the 5-step sacrificial layer processing. We have looked at some of the deposition techniques used to deposit both the structural and the sacrificial layers. We have looked at the common problem in surface micromachining which is stiction problem and looked at methods we can apply to prevent or to solve the problems. And we have also looked at the examples of complex 3D microstructures. So with that, I thank you for your attention and very good luck for your exam. Goodbye.